sometimes you need a better way to hold your work at the anvil. So let's take a look today at some anvil hold downs or simple work holding solutions for working by oneself at the anvil. Certainly a willing apprentice to hold this bar for you while you work or to hold, strike with a sledgehammer while you hold the bar and a handled tool, I wouldn't do it with a hand tool, is an excellent solution and you rarely need any other work holding. But most of us work by ourselves these days and we need some other way to hold work at the anvil. Now a very classic method that a lot of people use, a lot of people advocate, I use it from time to time but not very often, is to simply hold the work between your legs. One, I find this a little awkward because it doesn't, it doesn't allow me much freedom. If I want to work over here, I can't do that. There's only one orientation that you can work in this way. But it does work. I find it uncomfortable. I find it awkward. I like my anvil a little bit higher than a lot of people like theirs so I can stand upright when I work instead of having to hunch over. And that just makes that somewhat impractical. But it works. It's cheap. It's free. You probably have all the equipment you need. But there are some other ways you can hold work at the anvil. Simply using an adjustable work stand to set the work in is a help, although it can still be a little bit loose and floppy and it might still slide around on you. But it's way better than just trying to balance it on the anvil. Now to make this solution a lot better, and it's very simple, just get yourself some sort of a weight and a hook system. This is just a big chunk of steel on a piece of chain. And now that's a lot more stable and it's adjustable to anything. If you need wider bar, you can just get a little bit wider hook. But you can use much longer bar. You can put it on any side of the anvil. It doesn't have to fit your anvil. It fits anything you're using. And it's really a pretty handy system. Very simple. Now if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen me use this. This is called a hold fast, and it is just a bent over bar that locks in the hardy hole, and that holds things very well. It's still going to slide a little bit because the metal anvil doesn't grip as well as you might like, but it's very effective, again, very simple, but you have to have one that fits your anvil. And, the, and this is a loose fit. The way it works when you drive it down, it contacts the work here, the top of the, the anvil on one side of the pritchel hole, and the bottom of the anvil on the other side. I may have said hardy hole earlier, but you could make these for the hardy hole. I don't want to make one for an inch and a quarter hardy hole, but if you've got a three quarter inch hardy hole, that would be just fine. So when those all three points jam up, they lock, and you just hit down, and it locks. Sometimes it takes two hits. And you hit from the back and it releases. And it's very versatile, very easy to use, very easy to make. So let's make one of these. Probably the most important aspect of one of these is the relationship of the shank to your pritchel hole, or hardy hole if you're making one for the hardy hole. And that should be a loose fit, about a sixteenth to thirty-second of an inch undersize. So I have a three-quarter inch pritchel hole on this big anvil. That means I use an eleven sixteenths cold rolled round. Now most of you aren't going to have that. You'll probably have to forge down some three-quarter inch round. Or if you have a half inch hardy hole, you might have to forge down a half inch to a little bit under half inch. I just have this because it's also the size I use to make holdfasts for woodworkers. So I have a bunch of that stuff around. Now there's not really a magic formula for the end on one of these things, as long as it's got something that's going to grip. So I'm going to make this one very simple. Just going to make kind of a flat, kind of taper it out here. That's really all you need to hold your work. Bevel the top just because I can. As 
Some of this is just so you don't accidentally gouge hot work that might be a little delicate. But if that's the case, it's better to put a sacrificial piece of scrap in there. Next thing, we just want to bend it. Now the longer this arm is, the better your hold is going to be. Unfortunately, the longer the arm is, the more likely you are to unbend it, driving it and setting it if you get carried away. This one's seven inches. I think that's probably more than you need. I think I'm going to go for about six inches on the one I'm making here. I just want to get an idea of where six inches is with my ruler. Which is right about where my heat ends, which is perfect. So I'm going to put that in the, the hardy hole just because it's a handy place to bend this. And I'm going to go past 90. Exactly how far past 90 is just kind of up to you. I think I'm going to go just a little bit further and refine this bend and make it prettier. I'm going to do some of that right here. And if need be, I can work a little over the horn. If I've overbent, need to straighten out any kind of a dog leg there. But I think that's about what I want. That should be very functional. But now what about this angle? We don't want it that sharp. How do we set that angle? Really pretty simple. We can just put that right in the pritchel hole where we're going to use it. Drive that a little bit to make sure it's the right angle and set the end of it. Just let it cool. These don't need to be hardened or tempered or anything else. You see people making them out of leaf or out of coil springs, but I just don't think that really benefits you much. You can if you want to. But this works. I think I'm going to bevel this end a little bit just to make it a little bit more refined of a tool. I just want to knock the sharp corner off of that. I may hit that with a grinder a little bit to clean it up. Or you can file it, or you can leave it. That's really all there is to a hold fast. I'm going to let that cool before I drive it, because otherwise I'm just going to straighten it out. Well, let's take a look at something else. Uh, those first few options, holding it between your legs, getting some help from an apprentice, or a neighbor, or friend, or whoever happens to be hanging around, the work stand with a chain, or the hold fast, are really all I've ever used at the anvil. It's all I've ever needed. But there are some other options out there that some people like. And one I've been meaning to use for a long time is a half of a pipe clamp. Now the other half of the pipe clamp I used to make a safety stop on the treadle hammer. So this is just left over and I thought I would make a little anvil hold down out of it. I'm going to use one of my U-shaped hardy shanks so I can put a wedge in here to hold it down in the hardy hole. So I've got a wedge. This is made out of mild steel. It's just quarter by one and a quarter or something that's either been bandsaw and ground or forged into a taper to act as a wedge. I'm going to put that in the, the shank about halfway so I've got some extra space. And of course it's easy to make new wedges if you need them. You have to feed this down from the top. So I put that in and I can pull this up and I know now where my level with the top of the anvil is. So now I'm going to trim that off, but I need to think about that a little bit on how much of this I want. Now I can run this pipe clamp all the way down this little pipe nipple I've got and weld this right there, and I think that'll probably be fine, but if I wanted to get rid of some of these threads or I wanted to try and incorporate this pipe all the way down into there somehow, I could fuss with it, but I think just welding it right to the bottom here is going to work out just fine for me. So I went ahead and cut the hardy shank off. I decided I was going to go ahead and grind back that pipe so that it fits inside the U a little bit. I think that'll make for a better weld. It'll be a little bit stronger tool. Probably complete overkill. I don't think it needs it. But that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to go weld that up. I don't think you need to watch me weld. I am going to take this off the, the pipe before we weld it so I don't mess up the threads on this. So I've welded all that together. And I thought about 
putting a plate on here so that can't go through. The clamp will keep it from going through, but if there was a plate on the bottom, you could wedge it, it'd be wedged tight, and when you unclamp it, it wouldn't be loose. Unfortunately, that plate would be in the way of the clamp head going all the way down tight to the anvil, and it would affect the way you could use it, and it, I think it would cause problems. But it's also something I can add later if I can figure out a way around the problems. So I'm going to put that back together. It would help if it actually threaded. There we go. Now, the one advantage to this is the slot always has to go this direction, but because it's threaded, you can rotate this and either just unthread it a little bit or tighten it up just a little bit. Probably for me, I'll use it like this most of the time. So if we put the clamp in, or the wedge in, so that clamp's tight to the anvil, so I know it'll hold just about anything I want to put under there. So we can put that bar that I was working on earlier, clamp it, just a quarter turn of that, and that's pretty solid. Not as solid as I might look. There we go. Yeah, Not as solid as I would like. But part of that is because my anvil has a little crown in it this direction and I need to grind that down. That's better. If I get it right tight to the, the middle it works much better. So that's another option for a, an anvil hold down. Let me turn it your way so you can see what I'm doing here. So that goes in there. The wedge tends to stay put so it's not really a problem falling out. And that clamps that down and that holds your your work down. Fairly simple. I don't know that it's better than the hold fast, but I'm going to try it and I'm going to use it some since I took the trouble to make it. But that's really all it is. Now our hold fast, I ended up actually with a 5 inch arm on it, so it's not quite as long as I wanted. But I think it will probably work just fine. Still a little bit warm to the touch. As long as it's not right over the hardy hole, and it is not. And that holds about as well as I would expect. Again, because an anvil is polished steel, or smooth steel, it uh, doesn't hold as well as a woodworker's hold fast does, but that's enough to keep this bar from sliding off the anvil. It rotates very easily, but it doesn't move end to end or side to side. It's just I've got enough leverage here to rotate it. But they're very effective, and they're very simple, and in a lot of ways I think I still like that better than I'm going to like this. But we'll try it out. I have two other ideas here, and these are things that I've seen other people do that I've never actually tried myself, but they should work okay. One of them is this drill press clamp. And this is something that is sold just like this for clamping to a drill press table. And it's got a threaded shank and this big nut. And that could go through your pritchel hole, but for my anvil this threaded shank isn't long enough. So I would have to extend this, weld something on, re-thread it, and because I'm not sure what these threads are, they're not just half inch threads. It seems to be half inch, but not quite that the right pitch. I'm afraid they might be Wentworth, but they could be a metric thread. It just doesn't seem like it's the right, seems like it's exactly a half inch diameter, so I'm not sure it's really metric. But if you could extend that, weld something on, put a, a threaded rod you know about, put a different nut. Now one problem with anything like this is the bottom of your anvil is not flat across the bottom. It tapers. So you need some sort of a tapered spacer for the nut to engage with, otherwise you don't get a very good fit. That's the reason the pipe clamp doesn't really work with just as a pipe clamp, because that bottom part of the pipe clamp doesn't really engage very well. You would need a tapered spacer under the heel of the anvil. But I've seen people use these, and I think there may be some available with longer threads on them, because other people I've seen use them, I don't think they had to do anything with them. It may just be that my anvil is way thicker than theirs. 
But you could also make some sort of a threaded insert for the hardy hole to put that in. And then it would work quite nicely. And it works just like a pair of ice grips. Which is the other thing I've seen people do. They take a pair of vice grips and they cut this section off and they mount it to a hardy shank so that it goes into the anvil. And then you could have a plate here so it doesn't go in because as you tighten this down you could lower it below the level of the plate. I think that would work very well. I just don't want to sacrifice my vice grip C-clamp because like I say I've never used these options. In 30 some odd years I've always managed to get by holding it between my legs using a chain with a work stand or hold fast so I'm not going to cut up my vice grips just to have another option that I already know I don't need. But if you're just starting out or if you're having trouble holding your work these are options that might work for you. Well that's just a quick look at some work holding options things you can use at the anvil. You can adapt similar things to work at your workbench if you need to hold down to a workbench or if you have a big platen table that you need to hold things down. But odds are if you have a platen table you've probably already thought of a lot of this stuff because that's kind of what it's for. Chasing stuff around on the anvil can be really frustrating so having some way to help hold your work on the anvil can really make your day go smoother, increase your efficiency and probably make your work come out better in the long run as well. So make yourself a hold fast or set up a chain with a work stand or figure out some other way you can keep your work on the anvil while you work on it and it'll make your day go better. I hope that helps. I hope you found it interesting. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Share the videos with your friend. Watch a few more. But get out to the shop. Make time to make something and stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.